السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ وی بگین بائی پریزنگ اللہ اینڈ آسکنگ اللہ ٹو سینڈ ہیز پیس اینڈ بلیسنگ اپان دا فائنل پروفٹ محمد ابن عبد اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ آل دوز ہو فالو ہیز وے وت رائچیسنس انٹل دا لاسٹ ڈے ان ٹوڈیز ٹاک آئی وانٹ ٹو ڈسکس اے ٹاپک وچ از ناٹ آفن ڈسکس ان آور مسجدس اینڈ اٹ از اے ٹاپک دیٹ از ویری کروشل to our times. The title of today's lecture is Protecting Our Hearts from Atheism. Now, you may be wondering, why atheism? What's that got to do with us? We are Muslims. Atheism is a major problem in the 21st century. Now, many of us are under the delusion that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. But when you actually read the statistics, Islam is the second fastest growing religion in the world. Atheism has been spreading at a much faster rate. Atheists have gone in the past 100 years from being less than 1% of humanity to being almost 15 to 20% of humanity. And many of these people who have become atheists were formerly Muslims. Christians have become atheists, Hindus have become atheists, and now it has hit the Muslim community as well. Wherever I go in the world, I meet Muslims, or rather ex-Muslims, murtads, apostates, who have lost faith in God altogether, and who don't believe any longer. So this topic needs to be addressed. Now generally when we address it, we talk to the atheists. And we talk from a philosophical or rational or scientific perspective. But that's not what we're going to get into today. Because this talk is not for the atheists, it's for the Muslims. So we're going to talk about what we can do as Muslims to protect our hearts, the hearts of our families and our friends and our communities from this problem. Because it is a problem. It is a problem... that will take a person away from Allah, away from the deen, and towards the hellfire. So it needs to be discussed. And I'm going to talk about four things over the next few minutes. Firstly, why is atheism spreading? Secondly, I'm going to talk about the importance of us choosing Islam and not just being Muslims by accident. Number three, I'm going to talk about the importance of seeking authentic knowledge. And number four, the importance of having a close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first is the problem, and the remaining three points are the solution. And I believe anyone who does these three things, inshallah, their heart will be protected from atheism. Why do I say heart? Why don't I say the mind or the soul? Because in Islam... We believe that the heart is the center of emotion. We're not talking about the physical heart, where our blood comes from. We are talking about the metaphysical heart. When you talk about loving someone, or someone breaking your heart, we're talking about that heart. Right? The metaphysical heart. And the Prophet wasallam stated that there is a lump of flesh inside of us. If it is corrupt, everything about us becomes corrupt. And if it is pure, everything about us becomes pure. And he pointed to the chest and said, it is the heart. So understand that belief and disbelief are matters of the heart. Doubt about God is a disease of the heart. These things are the results of a dead heart, a heart that is disconnected from Allah. And so when we preserve the iman in our hearts, it has an impact on everything else in our life. So why is atheism suddenly spreading? When the bulk of human history, the majority of human beings believed in God. They may have been Christians or Hindus or whatever else, but they believed in God. Why is it suddenly in the 20th and 21st century, we now have entire countries and systems of government which are atheistic? Communism is an atheistic concept, right? It is a, the entire system is built around atheism. We have entire concepts revolving around the entire countries. China has the most atheists in the entire world. Why is this happening? 
Number one, because people had lost faith in their religion. It started with Christians. When people realized that the Bible was contradicting science, they began to lose faith. When people learned that their priests were abusing boys, they lost faith. When people learned about the contradictions in their Bibles, they lost faith. Having nowhere else to turn to, many of them became atheists. And this is why when you meet many of the brothers and sisters who have converted to Islam, their journey normally goes like this. They were born a Christian, they became an atheist, and then they discovered Islam and became a Muslim. <coughs> Atheism was part of their journey. Because they had lost faith in one religion, but they had not heard about Islam yet. So they had jumped to the conclusion that none of the religions are correct, because they had not yet heard about the true religion of God. And they are... Dozens of examples I know personally, even my own teachers, some of them were born Christians, they became communists and atheists, and later they converted to Islam. But this is something that happens all over. So one of the primary reasons why atheism is spreading is that people have lost faith in their religions. And this is happening in Muslim communities as well. When we have Muslim teachers who beat children in the name of Islam, many of those children end up leaving Islam altogether. A few years ago, I dealt with a case of a Hafiz of the Qur'an, who was the leader of his MSA in his university, who in his heart, he was an atheist. And when we tried to find out the root cause of it, he said his entire childhood, the teacher would beat the Qur'an into him with a stick. That's how he became a Hafiz. And he said, what kind of a religion beats its book into people? How can this be from God? How can God allow this? So he lost faith in Islam because of the actions of that man. An action which has nothing to do with Islam. If you believe that hitting children to teach them the Qur'an is part of Islam, I ask you to bring me a single hadith to prove it. A single narration where the Prophet wasallam or any of the Sahaba ever hit a child to teach them Qur'an. Even one. Even bring me a weak hadith. You won't even find a weak hadith on that topic. But it has become such a common part of our communities that it is chasing people away from Islam. We have people who had traumatic experiences in the masjid when they were children. They went to the masjid and somebody else was making noise and the uncle walks up and slaps them in front of everybody. That child grows up hating the masjid and they grow up hating Islam. Our actions are causing people to lose faith in Islam. And we'll talk a bit more about that in my second point. So these are the problems that are leading people away from the religion. Our actions are causing people to run away from Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Quran. He tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is Allah's blessing upon you that you are merciful to them. If you were hard to them, they will run away from you. If you, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were harsh to the Sahaba, they would have run away from Islam. The greatest of Muslims would have run away from Islam if it was presented to them harshly. So today, what do we think is going to be the result when we are presenting Islam harshly to other people? What do we think is going to happen? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Musa alayhi salam to the Fir'aun, the worst human being in the history of this world, Allah told Musa and Harun, وَقُولُ لَهُ قَوْلٌ لَيَّنْ Speak to him gently. Speak to him nicely. Speak to him in a polite way. So that he may think about what you are saying. So understand that our harshness is chasing people away. So this is one of the reasons why atheism is spreading. Another reason why atheism is spreading is because the modern world is focused on fulfilling the nafs. On fulfilling the desires. And when people find that their religion is getting in the way of those desires, they choose their desires over the religion. And so you actually meet people who will say things like, I left Islam because Islam doesn't let me fornicate. Really? You leave the religion of truth because it doesn't let you follow your nafs? How will you justify that when you die? You see, that this, 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 and this comes from, from the lifestyle that we live in this, in this Western world. You know, these countries that we live in, our media around us is all about desire. People's entire identities today is based on their desires. This was unheard of in human history, where people identify themselves by what their desires are. 
Now when our nafs becomes more important than Allah, that's when people go astray. So I've spoken enough about the problem. I don't want this whole talk to be just problems, problems, and problems. Let's get into the solution. I propose three steps. That if each of us apply these three things to our lives, our hearts and the hearts of our families will be protected from this fitna of atheism. Step number one. We need to move away from being Muslims by chance and we need to become Muslim by choice. What do I mean by this? For the majority of Muslims, many of us are Muslims just because our parents were Muslims. If our parents were Hindus, we'd be Hindus. If our parents were Christians, we'd be Christians. And when your Islam is based only on this, only on culture, only on following your forefathers, then it's not a matter of true belief. It's not a matter of I'm a Muslim because I believe in the Quran being the word of Allah. You know, that's a different concept altogether. Many, many people, the problem why they are unable to take Islam seriously, why they are unable to practice Islam, why they are unable to find the love of Allah, is because they haven't actively chosen Islam yet. It's just their culture. So the first step to solving our problem is to stop making Islam our culture and to fully embrace Islam as a way of life. To completely and wholeheartedly embrace Islam as a way of life. And this comes from seeking knowledge. And I myself know so many people, myself included, who when we were younger, we were Muslims because we were born into Muslim families. But when we began to study the different religions, talk to people from other backgrounds, read the Quran with understanding, read the books of Hadith, read the lives of the pious predecessors, we came to the conclusion that this is the only true religion of God. And on that moment, our mind switched from just being a Muslim by chance to being a Muslim out of conviction. And when that switch takes place, you have taken the first step to protecting yourself from leaving the religion. And I say this because every case I have dealt with where somebody left Islam, they were people who were just Muslims culturally. They weren't Muslims based on true faith. So my brothers and sisters, if we do not have true faith yet, if we are just Muslim because that's what we are born into, today is the day you start reading the Quran with understanding. Today is the day you start reading the books of Hadith. Today is the day you start studying Islam and reflecting and making dua to Allah and asking Allah for guidance. And you will come to the conclusion, you will come to yaqeen, you will come to conviction that this is the true religion of Allah. And when that conviction comes, then you experience true faith. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujarat that the Arabs say, we believe. Tell them, don't say you believe. Say we become Muslims because you haven't experienced true belief yet. Saying you are a Muslim is not enough. You have to experience true belief. And that comes from understanding the religion and its place in the world. The second point is that we need to seek authentic knowledge. The kind of knowledge that helps us to separate cultural practices that have nothing to do with Islam from real Islam. Each of us have an obligation to seek that knowledge. Very often when people leave Islam because of the practices of Muslims, those practices actually have nothing to do with Islam. I'll give you a very common example that has happened thousands of times across the globe. A Muslim woman leaves Islam and becomes a radical feminist. Why? Because Muslim men beat their wives. Muslims force their daughters into marrying men they don't want to marry. Muslims ban the woman from the masjid. You know what these three points have in common? All of these things are haram. But Muslims do it. And they, and they make it part of Islam even though it's haram. The Prophet wasallam said, Do not stop women from going to the masjid. Those were his exact words. A prohibition. It's haram to stop women from going to the masjid. The Prophet wasallam said about the men who beat their wives, he said, those are not the best of you. Meaning that's, that's not something a good Muslim does. The Prophet wasallam said about a man who forces his daughter to marry someone she does not like, he said that that marriage is not even valid. It's not valid. It doesn't even count as a marriage in Islam. But 
Muslims do these things, and then people seeing this without clear knowledge that this is not part of Islam, they end up rejecting Islam. But if we seek proper knowledge, we begin to differentiate, hold on, Muslims may be doing this, but this is not Islam. So we reject the wrong practice, but our Iman in Islam it doesn't just remain strong, it grows stronger. This is why it's so important to have the right knowledge. To be able to separate between truth and falsehood. To be able to separate between what Muslims are doing that is wrong and what Islam actually teaches. And every one of us is obligated to learn this knowledge and to teach it to our families. I'll give you another example. There are many Muslims across the globe in many different cultures and many different countries who are extremely superstitious. They believe in all types of good luck and bad luck. You know, don't leave that sandals upside down. Uh, have you heard, heard things like that? You know, don't leave the hot water running. You know? You tell someone your child is cute. Why do you think my child is cute? You're putting bad luck on him. No. This, this attitude is not from Islam. This is superstition. And what it comes, the good luck charms. Right? You're going to put the bracelet around the child's hand. You know, you want to rub some egg in his face and blow on it. You know, it comes the warding off of bad luck. Brothers and sisters, this is not Islam. These are practices we've taken from everywhere else. Now when someone who does not know the difference between what Islam teaches and what is just cultural practices, when they see this, they're either going to embrace it, thinking it's Islam, or they may reject the religion itself, thinking that this is a superstitious religion. And this is why authentic knowledge is so important. So what is authentic knowledge? Learn the Qur'an. Learn the life of Rasulullah wasallam and the Sahaba. Learn the Hadith. For me, the one thing that protected me and saved me when I was younger from falling into wrong understandings of Islam was the lives of the Sahaba. From the time we were little kids, our parents taught us the lives of the Sahaba. So when Muslims came to us and told us, do this, we would think, but the Sahaba never did that. They would come and say, this is what Islam says. Then we'd say, but we remember the Sahaba doing the opposite. You see, the, the lives of the Sahaba shows us the real understanding of Islam. When we look at the example of banning women from the masjid. In the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, one of his sons did not want to let his wife go to the masjid. We're not talking about all women, his wife. Abdullah ibn Umar, or one of his brothers, did not want to let his wife go to the masjid. His father reminded him of the hadith, do not stop the female servants of Allah from going to the masjid. And he said, if you go against this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you stop your wife from going to the masjid, I'm not going to speak to you anymore. Because you heard the word of Allah, the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you went directly against it. This was the attitude of the sahaba. This is how strict they were on the hadith. And today we don't even know the hadith. We don't even know what Rasulullah sallallahu teaches. So authentic knowledge is a barrier between us and doubts about our religion. And I come to the final point. My brothers and sisters, the final point. If you want to protect your heart from doubt and disbelief, develop a strong relationship with your Creator. Through quality ibadah. I say quality ibadah. Pray Salah with understanding and concentration. <coughs> Fast the month of Ramadan, understanding the objectives of fasting. That I am fasting in order to improve my taqwa. Wake up at night and pray the Qiyamul Layl, the Tahajjud, with conviction and understanding and connection with Allah. Make dua sincerely from your heart. Don't just raise your hands and bite your nails and say Amin after the Imam. Raise your hands and cry to Allah and ask Allah from the bottom of your heart for what you want. When we do ibadah in this way, when our ibadah is real, when our ibadah has quality, we will experience a closeness to Allah. We will experience the sweetness of Iman. And someone who experiences that has no chance of disbelieving. Because by Allah, if you have experienced the beauty of the hajjah, the sweetness of iman, the happiness that comes from your dua being answered, the reality of a dream that comes true, you have a dream at night and it comes true in, in reality. If you've experienced anything like this, you are never going to doubt the existence of Allah. And so, true belief, 
comes from practicing the deen. Let us not just be Muslims who only pray Juma. Let us not just be Muslims who are Muslim because our parents were Muslims. Let us be Muslims who understand our religion and practice it. And through that practice we develop a strong ta'alluq, a strong relationship with our Creator. It is only when we do that, that we will experience the sweetness of Iman. And when we experience the sweetness of Iman, we will never even consider doubting the religion. So to summarize, we spoke today about the problem facing the world of atheism. And we said there are three things that Muslims can do to protect their hearts from doubts about their religion. Number one is to make a mental shift from being a Muslim by chance to being a Muslim by choice, a Muslim through conviction. Number two is to seek authentic knowledge and through that knowledge to separate Islam from false practices that have nothing to do with Islam. And number three, number three is to develop a close relationship with Allah through quality ibadah, through worshipping Allah as He deserves to be worshipped. If we do these three things, then insha'Allah, insha'Allah, we will remain steadfast upon our deen for our life, and we'll be a means of guidance for other people as well. We end by asking Allah to protect all of our hearts from atheism, and from disbelief and doubts about the religion and deviation in all its forms. And we ask Allah to grant us conviction, to help us all experience the sweetness of Iman, to help us all experience joy and happiness in ibadah, and to make us from those who are closest to Him. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.